Hey guys, this is your tutorial for Friday, January 29th. Make sure you fill out the attendance link so that we can mark you guys present as um, being here today. Let's skip our would you rather and talk about our checklist items. So we just finished our reproduction unit. So today we're gonna take notes on our next unit, which is genetics. So we're gonna take notes together. And just as an FYI, your vocab, has been assigned to you, your genetics vocab. So um, just so you know, it's due February 11th. That is when your genetics vocab will be due. If you still have not turned in your reproduction vocab or you forgot to take your reproduction assessment yesterday, please make sure you get that done. All right, so if you will, go to the Classwork tab in Google Classroom and get out your Cornell Notes template so that we can fill it in. Remember that the highlighted words in the presentation are the words that go into the blanks of your notes. So let's talk about genetics. A couple of key terms and definitions you need to know. Genetics is the study of heredity. Well, what in the world is heredity? Heredity is the passing of a trait from parent to offspring. So if dad has blue eyes and you ended up with blue eyes, um, that is because you inherited it. It's heredity, okay? It's hereditary. So genetics is the study of the passing of traits from parent to offspring. Um, traits are just different forms of characteristics. So I just mentioned blue eyes. Blue eyes is a trait um, of eye color. You can have brown hair, red hair, black hair, blonde hair. So all of those are different traits. Now, what are genes? Genes are passed down from parent to child and they are what carries the traits, all right? So your genes carry each individual trait um, that gets passed down to you. And then the last word is alleles. Alleles are different forms of the gene. So if you're looking at height as the gene, you're gonna have an allele that represents short and you're gonna have an allele that represents tall. So if you're looking at um, freckles, you'll have an allele that means that freckles will be present. You'll have an allele for no freckles. So alleles are just different forms of the gene. So a little bit of background information. Gregor Mendel, he was a monk and he had a garden where he experimented with pea plants. Okay, so he looked at those peas and he wondered how come they were so different. How come some pea plants were tall, some were short, some came from a green seed, some were a yellow seed. So in order to figure out why they had these different characteristics, he cross-pollinated the pea plants, which means he took the reproductive parts of one plant and the pollen and brought it to another reproductive part of another plant. And he looked at the two parent plants to see how the traits were passed on. So Gregor Mendel is a huge part of um, the start of genetics. So we consider him the father of genetics. So he figured out um, that traits were carried in pairs on structures called chromosomes. So when we talked about um, reproduction and we talked about chromosomes a little bit, we said that chromosomes have DNA on them. So the chromosomes are made up, like you see here, of the DNA sequences, um, which carry your different traits. And on these DNA sequences, you have different little sections that code for specific genes. So when we're looking at the passing of traits, the way we look at it is through generations. So the first generation is your P generation, which stands for the parent generation. This is where it all starts, the P generation. When they cross or reproduce, the offspring that are created from that are the F1 generation. And then the offspring that are created from the next cross are the F2 generation, so on and so forth. The next one will be F3, F4, F5. So from Mendel's experiences um, with the pea plants, he was able to see that some of the traits that were passed on um, were the same and some were different. So in this unit, 
you are not going to be successful unless you know what the vocab words mean. So I'm going to try to give you ways to remember what this stuff means. The first two words that mean the same thing are purebred and homozygous. So when you get alleles, remember that carry those traits, you get one from dad and one from mom. And then that's going to come together and code for the trait that you get. If you are purebred for a specific gene, that means you got two of the same alleles. So that means you got a blue-eyed from mom and a blue-eyed from dad. You got two of the same alleles. You are a purebred or homozygous. Okay? So purebred or homozygous means two of the same alleles. The prefix homo stands for same. Okay? So an example would be if you had a purebred short pea plant, then if it was purebred for the trait of shortness, then it would have two short alleles that were passed down from mom and one passed down from dad. The opposite of that is hybrid or heterozygous. Those two mean the same thing. Um, if some organism is a hybrid or heterozygous for an allele combination, that means that they got two different forms of the gene. The prefix hetero means different, okay? So if it is heterozygous, that means it has two different forms of the gene. So if you're looking at the gene that we looked at up here of um, height, where we talked about short, if you have two different forms of the gene, that means you got one gene from one parent that was the tall gene, and then one gene from the other parent that was the short gene, okay? So you have two very different alleles. You're a mixture, all right? So with that being said, a good way to remember it is the word hybrid. When you think of like Jurassic Park or even, um, what was that movie, Hunger Games, when you had like the hybrid organisms that were made, they were like a mixture of two different organisms. Even when you think of a hybrid car, okay, hybrid is like a mixture. So if it is a hybrid allele combination, it's going to have two different forms of the gene. Purebred, think of the word purebred, where have you heard that? I'm sure you've heard of like purebred horses or a purebred dog. That means that that dog or that horse or whatever the organism is, if it's a purebred, it came from two of the same organisms. So if it's a purebred chihuahua, then its parents were both chihuahuas, right? It wouldn't be a chihuahua and Yorkie mix. That would be a hybrid or heterozygous, okay? So think of it that way. Now, the genes are going to control the traits that you get. You get one from each parent, right? So alleles are just different forms of that gene. If we have a gene for freckles, you're going to have an allele for freckles and an allele that means you don't get freckles. So alleles are the just the different forms of the gene. And all of your traits that you get are controlled by the alleles that you inherit from your parents. So like here, if you look at these sets of chromosomes, you see the... Um, the flower color gene right here. This one got the allele for purple flowers, but this one down here got the allele for white flowers. Okay. So let's talk about the different forms of an allele. You're either going to have a dominant or a recessive allele. So the alleles are going to code for the trait. So if you have a dominant trait, that means that that trait's always going to show up. Just like a dominant person is like overbearing, powerful, right? So a dominant trait is one that will always show up. Remember that you always get two forms from total from your parents, one from mom and one from dad. So if one of your parents gives you even just one dominant trait, that's the trait that's going to show up because it's powerful and it will always override other traits. Okay, when we make or we represent a um, dominant trait, we use a capital letter. So, for example, you have what we call a letter combination or a genotype for each trait that you have. If you had big A, big A, which means dad gave you a capital A, mom gave you a capital A, that means you got two dominant alleles. Okay, the opposite of a dominant allele or a dominant trait is a recessive one. If it's recessive, it's hidden, it's weak, 
it's not as powerful. If it's paired up with a dominant allele, it's not going to show. You're not going to show the recessive trait. You might carry it, but it's definitely not going to win out and show because the dominant will always show up. When we um, write a recessive allele, it's going to be a lowercase letter. So, for example, if you have big A, little a, that means one parent gave you a dominant version of the trait and one parent gave you a recessive version of the trait. Okay? Even though we see that recessive letter right there, it's not going to show up. And that's because the dominant one will always mask it because it's more powerful. The only way you're going to get a recessive trait to show up is up here if you have two. If you got a recessive allele from mom and a recessive allele from dad, then you will definitely have that recessive trait. But in the situation you see like in these two that are diagonal to each other, even though we see that one parent gave us a form of the recessive trait, the other parent gave us the dominant form and dominant always wins. So that recessive trait doesn't show up. Instead, the dominant one does. So let's practice here. If I tell you that big T is brown hair and little t is red hair, that means brown hair is our dominant trait because it's represented by a capital letter, and little t is our recessive trait because it's um, represented by a lowercase letter. So red hair is recessive, brown hair is dominant. If you were to have the allele combination of big T, little t, would you have brown hair or red hair? The correct answer would be brown hair because the capital letter always wins. If it's there, it's got the capital letter trait, the dominant trait. Big T, big T, well, we only have one option. It's going to be brown hair. And then little t, little t is going to give us the one recessive trait of red hair. So now we're going to throw these vocab words in hybrid or purebred. Remember, purebred means it's going to have the same alleles, and hybrid means it's going to have a mixture of alleles, like one dominant, one recessive. So that means the first one, because it's a mixture, he has one recessive trait, or sorry, one dominant trait and one recessive trait, because it's a mixture, this would be a hybrid. The next situation, big T, big T, well, those are the same, so it's a purebred, and then little t, little t is the same, so that's a purebred. So when we look at alleles, we look at the phenotype and the genotype. The phenotype is the organism's physical appearance, so the trait that they got because of the letter combination or the alleles that were passed down. So for example, the phenotype is what we physically see when we look at you. Like I can see that you have freckles or I can see that you have blue eyes. That's your phenotype, blue eyes, freckles. It's your physical appearance. <coughs> Excuse me. So remember it by the pH and phenotype and the pH and physical appearance. All right. The genotype is what we can't see. That's your genetic makeup, your allele combination. So I can't look at you and see big T, big T. I can't look at you and see big T, little t. That's your genotype, your genetic makeup. That is inside of you. So remember genetic makeup, genotype. All right, this is your allele combination. This is the trait that we actually see. So let's practice here. We have to type in the right phenotype. So see, they give us the letter combination, which is our genotype. We have to say what that means, what the physical trait is that that person's going to get. If big T is brown hair and little t is red hair, both the first two have a big T in them. So they are both brown hair. The phenotype or the physical trait is brown hair. Even though it's carrying a recessive trait here, it gets covered up and masked because there's a dominant one. The third one is little t, little t. So the physical trait they're going to get is red hair. So now we're going to type in the genotype or the letter combination. Big G is short, little g is tall. <coughs> so homozygous short. Remember that homo means same, hetero means different. So if it's homozygous, short, you're going to have two of the same short alleles. Well, short is big G, so this will be two of the same big Gs. Big G, big G. Hetero means different. So a heterozygous short organism would be a big G, little g. Even though it's carrying a little g, the big G is going to show up. That's why it's short. 
And then purebred tall. Purebred means it's purely the same. So if it's tall, it has to have a little g in it. And it's purebred, so it's two little g's. So let's talk about how we figure out the probability of getting traits. We use a Punnett square. And Punnett squares were created um, by Reginald Punnett, who traced heredity through chickens. He looked at their feathers, their gender, and he used this table to figure out the probability of passing on certain traits. How it works is you have one parent's allele combination or genotype on the top up here, like little b, little b. And then you have another parent's genotype or allele combination on the side, which might be big b, big b. How it works is you drop the top letters down. So that little b was dropped down in both boxes. So was this little b. And then the letters on the side get brought straight across. So big b, big b, big b, big b. So now this Punnett square is filled in. And you can see there's a 100% chance that they will create a child whose genotype will be big b, little b. And that means there's a 100% chance that they will pass on brown eyes. So let's do some practice. Step number one, like I said, put the parents' alleles. One goes on top, one goes on the side. So that's like saying mom is little t, little t, and dad is big t, little t. Doesn't matter which one you put where. Just put one on the top, one on the side. Then you drop the top letters down and the side letters come across. So like you see in this one, you were to drop a little t down and a big T across, that would fill in this box of big T, little t. You always write the capital letter first if there's a capital letter in the box. Same for this one. Little t got brought down. That little t got brought across. Now do this one. Little t brought down. Big T across. Last box. Little t goes down. Little t goes across. So now you have all your Punnett square filled in. So we're going to do some practice with these so that you guys can figure out how to use them. If big B stands for tongue roller, so the dominant trait here is being able to roll your tongue, and then the recessive trait little b means you can't roll your tongue, all right? So dad is big B, little b. That means that because he has a dominant trait, he shows the dominant form, so he's a tongue roller, even though he carries the recessive version. But mom is little b, little b, meaning she can't roll her tongue. So we're going to see the chances of them passing these traits on. So what you do is bring the big B down and the little B down and then the little B across and the little B across. And the question says what percentage of offspring will not be able to roll their tongue? So the recessive trait can't roll their tongue. In order to not be able to roll their tongue, they have to have the combination little B, little B. Wouldn't have been this box. Wouldn't have been this box, but this box and this box would have given us little b, little b, and little b, little b. So two out of four of the boxes will give us the trait of not being able to roll their tongue. And two out of four is half, so that's 50%. Now this one, big T means you get dimples, so that's dominant. Little t means you don't get dimples. So big T, you drop down. Little t you drop down. Big t you bring to the side. Little t you bring to the side. The question is what percentage will have dimples? So now you got a count of the four boxes. Which ones had at least one big t in it? Because all you need is just one capital letter for that trait to show up. So this had a big t. This had a big t because that big t got dropped down. So there's two out of four. And then this one over here also got a big T. So three out of four of the boxes are showing the dominant trait of dimples, which is 75%. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your teachers so we can help you.